The Intel Arc A380 has to be one of the worst graphics card launches in history, not the hardware itself, necessarily, but the retail launch of the hardware. By all indications, Intel knew the drivers were broken when the hardware was ready for release earlier this year. Rather than taking sufficient time to fix the drivers before the retail launch, and with the clock ticking as new AMD and NVIDIA GPU are on the horizon, Intel decided to ship its ARC GPU first in China likely not the sort of approach a company would take if the product were worthy of making our list of best graphics cards. Several months later, after plenty of negative publicity courtesy of GPU that made their way to other shores, and with numerous driver updates come and gone, ARC A380 has officially launched in the US with a starting price of $139. The single offering on Newegg sold out and is currently back ordered, but that's likely more to do with limited supplies than high demand. Still, the A380 is not all bad, and we're happy to see Team Blue rejoin the dedicated GPU market for the first time in over 24 years. Arc Alchemist Architecture Recap We've provided extensive coverage on Intel's Arc Alchemist architecture, dating back to about one year ago. At the time we first wrote that piece, we were anticipating a late 2021 or early 2022 launch that morphed into a planned March 2022 launch, then eventually a mid-2022 release, and it's not even a full release, at least not yet. ARC A380 is merely the first salvo, at the very bottom of the price and performance ladder. We've seen plenty of hints of the faster ARC A750, which appears to be close to RTX 3060 performance based on Intel's own benchmarks and that should launch within the next month or so. What about the faster still ARC A770 or mid-tier ARC A580 and other products? Only time will tell. ARC Alchemist represents a divergence from Intel's previous graphics designs. There's probably plenty of overlap in certain elements, but Intel has changed names for some of the core building blocks. Gun are the execution units, U, which are now called vector engines, Vs. Each V can compute 8 FP32 operations per cycle which gets loosely translated into GPU cores, or GPU shaders, and is roughly equivalent to the AMD and Intel Arc A380 specifications. With that brief overview of the architecture out of the way, here are the specifications for the Arc A380, compared to a couple of competing AMD and NVIDIA GPU. While we provide theoretical performance here, remember that not all teraflops and teraps are created equal. We need real-world testing to see what sort of actual performance the architecture can deliver. Intel is the only GPU company that currently has a VONE. In VP9 hardware accelerated, we're expecting AMD and NVIDIA to add a VONE support to their upcoming RDNA 3 and ADA architectures, and possibly VP9 as well. But we don't have official confirmation on how that will play out. We'll look at encoding performance and quality later in this review as well. They'll note that the GTX 1650 uses NVIDIA's older and VNC hardware that delivers a lower quality output than the newer Turing and Ampere version. The ARC A380 has theoretical compute performance of 5.0 teraflops, which puts it slightly behind the RX 6500 XD but ahead of everything else. It's also the only GPU in this price class to ship with 6 GB of GDDR6 memory, with a 96 that gives the A380 more memory bandwidth than AMD but without infinity cache and less memory bandwidth than NVIDIA's GPU. Power use targets 75W, though overclock cards can exceed that, just like with AMD and NVIDIA GPU. The ray tracing capabilities are harder to pin down. To quickly recap, NVIDIA's Turing architecture on the RTX 20 series GPU had full hardware ray tracing capabilities, and each RT core can do one ray slash triangle intersection calculation per cycle. Plus, there's hardware support for BVH training. It's not clear how many ray slash box BVH intersections per cycle the RT cores manage, as NVIDIA, to my knowledge, hasn't provided any specific... NVIDIA's Ampere architecture added a second ray slash triangle intersection unit to the RT cores, potentially doubling the throughput. In practice, NVIDIA says Ampere's RT cores are typically 75% faster than Turing's RT cores, as Ampere can't always fill all the ray slash triangle execute. Overview. Overall, Intel shows ray tracing performance on the A770 that's about 12% faster than the RTX 3060. Of course, that's not the A380, and there are plenty of other factors that go into gaming performance as we're not doing pure ray tracing yet. The A770 also has 32 RTU compared to the RTX 3060's 30 Still, Intel's RTUs sound pretty decent on paper. The thing is, with only 8 RTU, the A380 definitely won't be a ray tracing powerhouse NVIDIA, for example, has 20 or more RT cores in its RTX lineup, 
or 16 if you include the mobile RTX 3050 in the list, NVIDIA's slowest RTX chip. AMD, on the other hand, has as few as 12 ray accelerators in its RX 6000 series parts, and integrated RDNA 2 implementations like the Steam Deck can have as few as 8 RA. Though RT performance understandably suffers quite a lot not that you need ray tracing, even four years after hardware first supported the functionality. We are almost wrapping up. These are the common differences between these two. Hope you like this video. Please comment, share, and subscribe to this channel for more videos.